Hey guys, me and the team at Optimized Reach made this video to highlight some of the ways you can review and optimize your Google Ad campaign after you've gone live. We're going to use the tools and features you can easily access through the Google Ad Dashboard for this tutorial. This is all part of our video series on how to create a cost-effective and high-performing Google Ad search campaign. All these videos can be found on our channel and there's links to each video below in the description. Now let's get started. We are going to cover some of the important ways you can review and improve the performance of your Google Ad after it has gone live. So let's start with one of the most important areas, keyword bidding and quality score. So if you, this is where your campaigns are all going to be and in each campaign you have your ad groups. So let's go to the ad group level. Let's go to our keywords and in your keyword portion of the dashboard this is where we're going to look at the quality score and any bidding adjustment we need to make. So we've set this campaign to have a manual cost per click and we've set this ad group with a maximum cost per click of eight dollars. After you've gone live if any of the keywords that you had selected if you were under bidding there would be a notice here in status it would say that your ad is limited and it would say you are bidding below the average first page bid this doesn't mean that your ad would never show with the bid amount you've selected but because your bid is under the average of what it would take to be on the first page your ad will be shown a limited number of times so you may want to raise your bid when you select manual CPC even though you've selected a maximum CPC or cost per click for the ad group you can still manually adjust your cost per click for each keyword if you don't have a manual CPC bidding strategy then many of these options are not available to you because you're giving Google the right to decide how much it should bid with your money on each click but if you are using manual CPC, then you should be reviewing the totals for the three categories in this section, estimate first page, estimate top of page, and absolute top of page, just to determine if you should either be increasing or decreasing your manual CPC amount. So make sure you're not spending more per click than you need to, because if you can get all the clicks that you want with lower bids, then make the adjustment and save that money. And if you're not getting the impressions that you want, then possibly you need to increase your manual CPC number. Even if it's just for some of the keywords and not for others. Each one you can have a different amount. Now, of course, this is over an all-time date range. These numbers change. Some of the services and products you might be selling are very seasonal, and you might see wild fluctuations just on a monthly basis so make sure when you're reviewing these numbers in your campaign you're paying attention to the date range you've selected additionally you should be looking at your quality score your quality score will determine how much you're paying per click if you have a better quality score you'll be paying on the lower end per click. Google rewards you for having a better quality score. Google is going to give you a quality score for every keyword that you do. It is an estimate of how relevant your ad is, and that's correlating your keywords, your landing page, your ad, everything going together. So quality score is important. You're able to find that here. How much people are paying per click or how much you might have to pay is important as well. So you can view all of that in this portion and you should be looking at this on a regular basis. Additionally, when it comes to bidding, you should be looking at auction insights. So right here, we can click. And again, very important here is to be looking at the date range to make sure you have the right date range selected because things change over time. But this shows you a little bit of how you stack up against your competitors. Um, these are all important to understand these different ranking. Impression share. An ad is shown as an impression. Doesn't mean it's clicked on. It's just shown when somebody does a search result. This is the number of impressions you received divided by the estimated number of impressions you were eligible to receive. So in my case, my impression share is 34.6. 
many of my competitors is much lower. In some cases, having the highest number doesn't equal success. It's not like I should be going for significantly higher numbers. This is just a way to compare your ad and your keywords versus your competitors. If your ad wasn't running enough and you were you were hoping to get, you know, 100 clicks a month and maybe you're only getting 10. You might want to check your impression share and see if it's a low number or a high number. If the impression share was very low, like in this competitor's case, that means there's some things that you can do on your end to get your ad more click. There's The issue is not necessarily that there's not enough time somebody's doing a search for the keywords. Maybe your bid is too low. If your quality score is low, Google will be selecting other competitors that have better quality scores. So impression share is important to look at in that case. All of these categories are important. Looking a little bit more into them might give you an idea if you are spending too much per click or if you're not spending enough per click. If in this case, for example, this is the absolute top of page rate. Now to show up at the absolute top of the page, that is the most expensive click. If your number was very high, that means you're, you're bidding a lot for every single click. Because again, they're, Google's going to charge you more to be at the absolute top versus just to be on the first page. Somebody like this competitor who has 8% top of page, they're probably trying to not bid as much per click. They're putting in lower bid maximums. So they're showing up on the first page, but they're not showing up on the absolute top of the page. So all of these are important to look at as a way to signal to yourself whether you can can or should make changes with your bids or your keywords. Additionally, you can see this is the website, this is the URL of our competitors. So this is a way if you're seeing some new competitors you haven't noticed before, you can check out their website. You can see if they have any ads, any specials that they're running that might be taking clicks or purchases away from you. So a lot of people will use the auction insights as a way to look at their competitors pages, to see their call to actions, to see their specials and compare it what they're running against. And that way they can see if there's any adjustments they need to make. Maybe they're charging too much, too little. Um, you can really get a lot out of this auction insight. So check this out, especially after uh, when you're trying to make improvements to your campaign. You can also look over here at our ads, our ad and extensions area for all of your ads that you have running. And by with our filter, we're able to select all of our ads, all of our ads that we have enabled, meaning that they're active, they're live, or all of them that are, that are removed. This gives you a chance to compare some of the results of your ads. And you should be testing different ads, different wording, to see what is most effective, what is having the highest click through rate, what is getting you the most conversions. This is important that you sh this is important for you to do to be looking at success if there's room for improvement, ads maybe that you should turn off because they're not getting any clicks, maybe you need to change some wording. So this is an important area to review as well. Also, in, as it relates to keywords, one of the most important things that you should be looking at after your campaign has gone live is this section here where it shows searches that people have done where it's triggered your ad. So here is a category where it just shows words in general that have been in the searches, and this is the actual searches that people have done. And when I go to one of these searches, it will tell me Stanley Steamer, this is a search that my ad triggered for. It was triggered by the keyword carpet cleaner, a broad match keyword. And perhaps and I don't want my ad triggering when Stanley Steamer's ad triggers. And maybe what I would prefer to do is add Stanley Steamer as a negative keyword, which means my ad is prevented from running. And that's the power of negative keywords. If you don't know much about negative keywords, this is a really important topic and it's a very powerful way to for you to take control of your Google ads. You want to be looking for search terms that people are doing that's causing your ads to trigger that you would prefer your ad not to run when they trigger that. As an example, here is couch cleaning service. If I don't clean couches as part of my service, and you can see there's been three clicks to my ad when somebody's done a search for couch cleaning service. 
if I didn't do couch cleaning, I would immediately want to prevent my ad from running when somebody's doing that type of search. I would add it as a negative keyword. So it's always important to look in this area. You can add a negative keyword just as a word. And this gives you a very good detailed breakdown of the impressions, the clicks, how often. And you can see in this particular case when somebody has done a search for OxyFresh, 70% of the time they've clicked on our ad. Maybe we should look into this a little bit more and see what what is going on with OxyFresh. What are their specials? What If I go to their website, how does it look compared to ours? And maybe there's an opportunity here that we can explore. So there's a lot of good information that you can get from this area. This is, if I'm going to my ad group, my overview, and then down here to the searches area. I can also go here by going to keywords. I can go to search terms. And this is also going to be giving me the same information. This tells me the search term that was triggered, that triggered my ad what the match type was, how many clicks my ad has received when somebody did that search term. So a lot of powerful information here you really need to be checking out. The next part I want you to pay attention to is up here in the tools. There's a lot of options for you up here in tools, but some of the important parts would be in measurement. You really want to link your ad to Google Analytics. If you don't have a Google Analytics account set up, it's free. Go ahead and look into that, set that up because there's a lot of powerful information that you can get from Google Analytics and it's easy to set up your ad and your Google Ad campaign with Google Analytics. And it's going to open up a lot more information for you that you will want to compare to optimize your campaign. You also can find the Keyword Planner. This is not the other important part of this tools category. We have a whole video on the Google Keyword Planner tool very important part of having a successful campaign is doing the keyword research so these are two of the most important areas in your tool category and finally one of the important parts of the Google dashboard especially after you've gone live is up here in the recommendations and the notifications that you will get from Google Google will make recommendations after your campaign goes live if there are any issues and these would be important fixes that you need to make so that your campaign is live it would be up here. Important to know, just because Google gives you a recommendation and says you should and suggests you should change your bidding strategy, you should not automatically follow that advice. They will give you recommendations on keywords to add, they will give you recommendations on bidding strategies to change to. That is not always in your best interest. That is not always going to give you the best results and give you the control that you need to keep your cost low and to keep your ad profitable. So don't just blindly follow Google's recommendations. Many of the notifications that they will give you will be important, you know, especially if there's an error found in your campaign, something's wrong, your campaign's not knowing, it will notify you, so pay attention to that. But a lot of the keywords they suggest will only give you traffic, but it might not be the, the right kind of traffic. And also when they make suggestions about changing, they would always suggest that you do not use a manual CPC bidding strategy. They would always suggest you going with something that's automated and you're losing a lot of control when you follow that recommendation. So just because they recommend it, please really look into it. And we discuss a lot of these recommendations and strategies, what not to follow from Google what to do on your own, ways that you can take control of your campaign. We discuss all of that in our other videos in this series. So if this is your first Google ad campaign or you haven't had a lot of success, you've been doing Google ads, but maybe you feel like it's costing you too much money, you're not getting the results you want, please check out the complete series that we have. It's how to create a better Google ad. There's a lot of information I think you'll like. But that's it for this video. Those are the most important areas for you to check out and review after your campaign's gone live. Please like and subscribe and drop any questions that you have below in the comments and we'll answer those as soon as we can. And see you next time.